All right. Well, good morning, good afternoon. Uh, depends on the time zone you're at. Uh, thank you for joining us today for this uh, new series of Fortinet. Um, today, we're gonna have a little bit of an agenda. Um, I'm gonna actually have some presentations and I'm, then I'm gonna show you the GUI of the Fortigate. So let's see on the agenda. Today, we're gonna actually go over who and why Fortinet. Uh, we're gonna go over the Fortigate, the security fabric, what is a photo uh, guard? And then we're gonna look at actually the GUI. And I wanna introduce myself. My name is Israel Quintero. I am a army veteran of 10 years. Uh, I do have my NSC four, five, and seven. I do have a six, but not completed the whole series. But my NSC seven is in OT security. And with me, uh, he actually is one of my great friends, uh, old co-worker at Fortinet, uh, Kevin Wigton. He's actually gonna be uh, on the chat. If you have any type of questions, please uh, uh, actually go to your chat and Kevin will be helping me answering those. So I wanna give a big thank you for Kevin from Fortinet to joining us today. Who is Fortinet? Fortinet has been around for over 20 years. Michael Kim, uh, Michael and Kim Z uh, started this company back in the day where they are the leading, uh, the leading on uh, global based. They have done over $5.5 billion from last year's numbers, right? And they are one of the number one leading firewalls in the interesting industry sorry and um so whenever you hear fortinet a lot of people think about fortigate a firewall well fortinet actually has a lot more that they have to do with that right and i'm actually going to show you here the the overview of what is the whole reason of fortinet and saying that why why would we go with Fortinet? Well, many reasons. Fortinet actually doesn't depend on different other, they build their own chipsets, meaning your uh, CPUs, they use ASIC chips, where it actually consumes less power and they're able to deploy more of the firewalls and be able to for you to have it, especially when we had that chip shortage. Fortinet was one of the leading ones that was able to maintain and protect uh, our customers to be able to run their company safely. Uh, so one of the, that's one of the biggest reasons Fortinet is still driving and becoming still the number one leader in, um, in the industry. And one of the other things, they offer a lot of training for free. Uh, you can go into the Fortinet training and then you can actually sign up to learn your basics on what is on the actual security aspect or on the on uh, and moving on to what is on the Fortinet aspect of their products. So it does give you a quick overview of everything what they have done and doing. Another main reason is they partner up with uh, many other um, industries out there to actually give you that full protection. They're not just the main people that will stay together and see what is out there and then share it out. No, they actually will reach out to different companies and making sure that everybody has the same information. And if they haven't found anything, they will uh, uh, work with other people and making sure that they're all up, up to date and giving you that protection as, um, as soon as they learn about it. So that's the beauty when it comes to zero days attacks, that is the photo guard. And I'm actually gonna talk a little bit more whenever we get there. But that is one big picture that a lot of people don't understand that they just don't try to maintain the information themselves. They actually work hand in hand with others. As you can see in this uh, picture here, they work with uh, Interpol, uh, Cyber Threat Alliance. I mean, there's so many uh, 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 companies out there that they will work with. <clears throat> Affordgate. It's not your typical firewall. It's a next-gen firewall. Now, 
when you're talking about a firewall, a lot of people are thinking about a layer three uh, closing ports and things like that. Well, a next gen firewall, you actually can do what is uh, be able to do the blocking on layer seven on the application layer. And including with this folder gate, uh, a lot of people are starting to use SD-WAN. Well, the SD-WAN is actually embedded within all four gates from the smallest to the biggest. SD-WAN is part of it and it's free. Um, so you can utilize that. The VPNs, one of the biggest things with VPNs, they those are free as well. Now, a lot of people say, is, well, what's the limit? There's no limit. The only limit is how much can that uh, box can actually handle? Right. If you go with a smaller folder gate and you have like a thousand people logging in, of course, that box is not going to be able to handle that. Uh, that's where um, me and my, uh, myself and Kevin and other SCs will join and actually be able to uh, size that box properly to be able to fit your solution to your company and be able to support many VPNs, SD-WANs and anything like that, making sure that you're up to date and not overload that box. Uh, another neat thing that the Fortigate actually does is actually having the Wi-Fi and the switching controller in there. What does that mean? Why would you wanna have that? Well, everything you wanna have in one single box, rather than you going to different actual uh, logins, to configure your firewall, um, uh, your firewall, your switches, your APs. I mean, why just go to one box and actually do that? I mean, that's the beauty of having this FortiGate that you're able to have that flexibility and be able to do the, uh, any type of configurations uh, right away. Um, another neat thing is the FortiGate is just not a physical box. They actually come in VMs. Uh, putting it in a public cloud is a great solution, especially if you want to see the traffic that is coming in and out and be able to have that same comfort of security um, going through your public cloud. That is a major um, game changer right there, uh, making sure that you're able to have a either a site to site, a, a bespoke, or just staying in the cloud and be able to protect your assets in the cloud, that is a great way to put a FortiGate in the cloud as well. Automation. Automation is a one of the greatest features that is already part of it and is free, where you can actually set up a trigger and let whatever action you desire to happen, right? That is part of the FortiGate in there. So it's, it comes with a lot of different things just to protect you. As you can see, this FortiGate, uh, the FortiGates can give you a long list of protection and give you new uh, flexibility uh, to go around to fit your needs. Well, what makes this FortiGate run? It's the engine back there, right? It's the CPU. Well, Fortinet actually call it SPU, right? Now they have different flavors of it, but these are the three top uh, uh, chips that they currently have. They have the network processor content and the security. Now the SP5 is very new. That is coming, uh, just came out not too long ago. That one is actually gonna improve your whole security aspect and be able to uh, produce more content, be able to process that information a lot better um, especially when it's when you go with the bigger box, uh, bigger uh, content processor, and with a network processor with it, right? So now you have two different chips that actually can do two separate contact, and now you're not overloading overloading one CPU. You can, and you have another CPU that can handle just the network itself. So that's a, a beauty and a beautiful architecture design that Fortinet uh, did to be able to handle the, the traffic, handle any type of pressure that's coming in. Uh, that's where that uh, actual scaling of the box uh, will come into play, making sure whatever is needed for your needs, that's where the CPUs will come into play as well. And again, uh, for people who just joined, please, uh, any type of questions that you have, 
um, go into the chat as well. Thank you. Fortinet Security Fabric. What is that? Maybe you guys started to hear the fabric. Fabric. Well, one of the things is Fortinet for many years already have allowed other devices talk to one. Well, why would you want to do that? It gives you that full visibility, give you that full automation, integration, right? Uh, now Gartner just released, well, having that type of uh, integration should be a great thing. Well, other companies starting to finally see that picture and starting to do that. Fortinet has been doing it for already, for many years, over 10, I uh, believe for 20 years already. And they've been having that integration together, um, not just by having a single vendor like Fortinet, you're actually tying up with other vendors to have that uh, integration. That is where that security fabric comes into play, right? Uh, as well, when it comes to having the uh, switches, the APs, analyzer, manager, I mean, those are all solutions that are being branded together and being integrated and being able to create an automation piece all at once. Now, Fortinet does have a large number of solutions. Um, now, I know this is a very overwhelming uh, slideshow right here and, and bear with me. But if you're looking for something that is actually on the uh, secure your network, right? Definitely, we're going to start with the Florida gate, um, your switches, APs, your NAC, right? Those are anything that falls under the security of your network. Anything in the cloud, right? Public security. Now, when I mentioned the Florida gate can actually is a VM. One of the beauty things about the Florida gate is they actually use what is called Photo OS. The photo OS is actually the same GUI as on-premise. So you don't have to learn a different GUI uh, or interface to, to a VM-based FortiGate. They're all the same. It feels the same. It works the same. The only difference is just connecting the different um, VNets or the virtual networks in the back end. That's the only difference. And setting up the policies and on the physical and on the virtual is going to work the same way. But at the same time, when it comes to the public security, it does offer other uh, products in there as um, photo DDoS, um, CNMP. I mean, there's so many others that actually can be a SaaS solution that actually can sit on a on the Fortinet cloud. So. That's one thing. Now, the zero trust access, some of it is already embedded with the FortiGate, uh, for example, the ZTNA. Now, of course, you need to get the agent that will sit at the edge on the endpoint device to be able to talk to the FortiGate and set up that uh, zero trust. But the zero trust is already, the configuration can be set on the FortiGate. The only thing is getting the solution to be able to attach to the endpoint uh, to do that. Uh, photo Sassy, I know you guys been hearing a lot of the Photo Sassy, I mean, Sassy out there. Everybody is trying to get into that uh, new play. And it is a great solution, especially because COVID did show us uh, that we can work from home a lot more. Well, one of the biggest things from working from home, the challenges are that you cannot actually uh, set up a great configuration or a great security into different uh, applications um, at your endpoint. You want to protect your asset as your laptops and things like that. Well, SASE can actually set up, if you have a lot of SaaS solutions uh, in the cloud, SASE is one of the great ones that will allow you to create a tunnel uh, directly to um, one of the SaaS applications rather than going through your firewall whenever you VPN. And, and then it will actually go back and talk to that SaaS um, application. This one, you will not actually interfere with the firewall. It will just have a secure tunnel back to the SaaS application. 
So it's a very beautiful uh, solution that is a big talk out there. And if you have any other questions with that or any you would like to see a demo or anything like that, please reach out to us. We can definitely give you a demo on that. Uh, the authenticator, the tokens. I mean, uh, that is a lot of the zero trust access. Another thing that I really do want to hit on here is the SOC view. Now, a lot of people, a lot of companies out there are like looking into a SOC, uh, trying to have that security operation center, right? And this Fortinet does have a number of actual uh, solutions for you. The major one is Photo Analyzer. Photo Analyzer is actually one of the ones that you can get as a VM or as a uh, physical uh, appliance. Now, the challenge with the physical, you will come out limited, um, or there is a cloud solution for Analyzer that will sit on the Fortinet cloud and set your logs over there. So any of the number of uh, Fortigates you have, or I will go and send those logs to Photo Analyzer. Now, take in mind, Photo Analyzer is just for a Fortinet product, uh, for, especially for the Fortigate. It was designed for the Fortigate to retain those logs and centralize them and give you those reporting. Um, now, if you're looking for something more as a SIM, then we have a Photo SIM. Yes, there is a lot of photo everything. Um, it, it does get a little confusing, but bear with me. <laughs> photo SIM is a SIM solution. Now you can actually get different logs from different um, vendors into one central location. That's where the SIM will come in into. Now, if you're looking for something with the remediation, that's where the SOAR will tie into the SIM. I mean, there's so many beautiful solutions that work hand in hand in here. Um, not gonna go too much on this already. I think I went a little bit beyond this. Uh, so one of the things what I talked about was the integration, right? Well, there is Titans with other vendors. Now they have over 500 uh, plus uh, integrations, right? We have uh, AWS, we have uh, the public clouds, we have uh, the network, like the Palos, the Cisco's, I mean, there's a large number how we can tie up other vendors. For example, if you have um, a cross strike and you still have a contract with them, and but you want to maintain a, uh, want to integrate it with your Fortinet solution, you can definitely do that, right? We're not telling you to not go and look at other vendors. Definitely, uh, let's see what you guys have. We can stick with that vendor. Let's see how we can integrate it. Now, one of the things is please talk to uh, us um, and we can definitely see the integrations that will work uh, hand in hand and how we can put them all together to give you that uh, beautiful uh, security fabric look. So uh, don't uh, don't think that, oh, because I don't have Fortinet right now, oh, because I have one Fortinet, I had to get rid of everything else. No, that's not the case. We can actually integrate it but please reach out to us and we can uh, talk over on this. Now, a lot of people are looking into the OT space, right? So we can definitely integrate that. So any schools, anything like that uh, on the SLED, on the Fed size, I mean, we have different solutions. Uh, going back to the FortiGate, uh, a lot of people, when we're talking about the um, OT solution or IOTs, uh, putting a different, Fortigate out there and to be a rugged. Fortinet has rugged switches, rugged Fortigates, rugged uh, APs, right? If you have different type of line that this is gonna take a lot of stream cold, stream heat, talk to us, we do. Fortinet does have different options for that to be able to uh, fit onto your solution. Now, FortiGuard, is I call it the brainchild. Why? Because they actually get millions of hacks, a lot of signatures. These guy, uh, this team is actually a huge team to keep us safe. They are looking into maintain 
our PhotoGates or PhotoNet solutions up to date right away and be able to give us the latest and greatest to making sure that you're protected. Now, it is an elite group, um, that, but at the same time, only because an elite group doesn't mean that uh, they're not working together with any other ones. Now, what a little feedback, a little bit of history. Um, if you never heard of the Cyber Threat Alliance, Cyber Threat Alliance was created by Photonet and Palo Alto back in the day. They came to this, they created this alliance to be able to share any type of data uh, in between they have caught and to be able to um, be able to protect their clients. Now, since then, they have added Interpol, uh, other vendors into it, and they have worked with NATO and things like that. So they actually, back in the day, they actually helped NATO caught, uh, catch somebody uh, by utilizing the Cyber Threat Alliance. Uh, information. So it's a great history. So if, if you guys are saying, well, other vendors have better security, well, are they tied into the actual Cyber Threat Alliance? If they're not, well, this is a big group where they're actually working together to be able to protect you. That is the beauty. That's why Fortinet is, has a curse and a blessing at the same time. Uh, one of the biggest things is Anything that comes out and they catch it, Fortinet right away informs you. Now, it's good because it's telling you what's going on. But at the same time, it looks bad because a lot of people can take it like, oh, my God, there's another vulnerability. Oh, my God, this. Well, I prefer knowing there's something going on than wait for it. A lot of other vendors don't even tell you there's a vulnerability. They try to hide it. Photonet actually tells you, hey, refund the vulnerability, we're working on it. And then they'll notify, it's patched up, don't worry about it, it's taken care of, or we have to do an update firmware. But they're truly honest. Um, and it's, it could be a blessing and a curse at the same time. So it's a thing that I like about Photonet. I like to know what is going on on my network uh, to be able to make sure that I'm protected. So that's one of the beauty things about it. So anything, whoever's, if you have a SOC team or a NOC team, I mean, they have those type of tools that will work with the photo guard, uh, keeping you up to date. Now, for now, let's go look at the actual uh, photo gate GUI. Let me log, let me log in really quick. So here we actually have the PhotoGate that is the dashboard. The first thing that you log in, it tells you what you have. Uh, at the moment on my security fabric, I got a PhotoGate, I got an analyzer, I got a, a sandbox, I have a photo manager, I got switches, I got APs. Um, I don't have my extender, but I have photo clients on it. Um, that's what I have, right? At the same time, it does give you a actual look how everything is. That's one of the beauty things. Now, if a lot of people are like, oh, I don't want, I just want to go in there and log in really quick and just to take a quick peek, you can actually customize your tabs here to see what you want to see right away. In this case, I wanted my security, uh, my network, my user accounts, uh, my Wi Fi, the rugged, I uh, mean, the rogue APs. Those are the type of features that I'm looking at right away. Now, another thing is that what I like about Fortinet is their physical typology. Now, a lot of companies, a lot of vendors out there don't actually give you this type of look. Now, right now, what it's doing is actually collecting the information and creating a typology, what is on your actual uh, system. In this case, I have a photo gate that I'm currently logged in into. Within that photo gate, I have one device that is definitely this laptop. And I have a switch. With these switches, I have two different switches connected to it. Now, if you hover over it, it tells you the actual port. It tells you everything of what type of firmware, things like that. It will tell you the whole information um, from here as well. 
even if you hover on the main one, it does tell you uh, the same information. Now, another thing is that is really neat. These are APs. Now, if you want to see how many people or device or devices are connected to it, you can actually click the plus button. Now, the bigger the bubble means the bigger the data. They're consuming more data. Um, I believe with this one here, this is a bigger bubble. As I hover, it shows me everything that I have. Now, this one particularly is a actual uh, Samsung, it's a Galaxy, it's a phone. As you can see, it's an Android. Um, and over here, I have a Linux that then technically this is my AP, I mean, my printer that will give you that information as well. It gives you the uh, IP address, the name of the device, what uh, SSID is using, what AP is using. I mean, this is just simple things that will connect into your device. So that is the physical topology. Now there is a, um, a different uh, logical logic uh, topology by the actual giving you the hardware a little bit better. Now, if you have a number of solutions of different folder gates, it actually will be listed under that uh, physical topology. It will show you literally every single folder gate that you have if they're tied into a switch, if they're tied into other APs, everything will be listed all in there. Another great thing, what I like, and this is only on the security, uh, on the enterprise. Now you can get this a la carte, but it is the security rating. Now the security rating, why would I get that? Now, if you are a SMB or a one man shop, uh, things like that, I will highly recommend get the enterprise bundle. The reason is this will actually build a analytics uh, well, a rating on how your environment is. Uh, I got a C on my optimization. Now, those, what am I failing there? So if I extend there, it tells you the passing and the failing with them, the failing, I have uh, policies, um, devices, things like that, right? So how can I improve this? So if I clicked on one on the uh, on my Fortinet POE status, it actually tells you what is there, why is taking out some of the uh, points off, why are you failing? Now there is a particular another one that will allow you to do it pretty easy, what they call easy, <clears throat> and I don't have that, um, but it will be a little button that will actually do it for you. It will create a actual, it will create it automatically for you. Any type of, uh, to um, do, to remit, uh, to fix that error. So in this case, if you wanna fix this error, you gotta go under system and then administrators, right? and tells you where this is failing. Now, if you're under compliances and you wanna know if you are gonna fail on something, the compliances are here. This is the information that will tell you that you might fail or you will fail. So it will tell you by you improving these, you're actually improving your compliances as well. So if anybody is uh, wants to uh, take your time and finding out what you're failing, I mean, all means you can do that. But I prefer letting the Fortigate do that work for me so I can go in there and do an automation or go in there and just uh, fix it myself. Uh, this is uh, one of the things that you can create a report and tell you every week, every day, every hour, however you want to do it, to set up to be able to fix anything that you feel like you, you are failing. Now, this is on the security uh, posture the the fabric coverage and the automation piece, right? So these are one of the biggest things. Again, um, this is for enterprise bundles, security bundles, or you can get it a la carte as well. Now, another big thing is the automation. This is already included within the Fortigate. 
uh, you don't have to worry about going out there and uh, finding out, oh, is this free or I have to have an add-on. No, this is not an add-on. It's already included. Pretty much everything that is uh, in there, I'll, pretty much everything what I'm going to be talking about is already included. So one of the things that it is, is the automation. Now, for example, so Fortinet already gives you some templates uh, with it as well. Uh, one of the ones where like the network is down, your analyzer is down. Now, one of the things to do this, if you go in here and select it, you can actually select what do you, what, how many Forti gates or to all Forti gates. Now, if you have a large number of Forti gates, you can actually uh, have it to apply to all Forti gates or a specific Forti gate. Um, the actual trigger will be, well, analyzer, right? Now you can go in here and create your own, but at the same time, you can create an action item. What do you want it to do? In this case, I have it to do an email. So the email, you can uh, create your own and customize it the way you want, right? And it will email me if the analyzer goes down. Now, there is another action item with this. At the same time, there is a, a scale time. Now, sometimes if something happens within just seconds or the network went down for like a second or two, um, you can actually uh, set up a, a delay saying, okay, let's wait 10 seconds. If that hasn't come back up, send me an email. So now you can customize this to however seconds you want to delay it. So that's one of the beauty things that is already included. Now, if you would like to learn and listen to uh, about this a little bit more, please reach out and let us know. Um, another thing that it is, is the fabric connecting. Remember when I mentioned everything, Fortinet has been one of the leaders, leaders out there that actually has having other devices connecting within each other? Well, this is that. That is the fabric. Uh, having my EMS, my Forta clients, connecting back to my Forta gate. Well, I want to know what is going on in my endpoint if they're not connected to my VPN, right? It still can send those logs and have that communication uh, by actually importing the policies from my Forta gate to my EMS. I mean, you can do that. So there are so many great benefits by utilizing the fabric. And believe me, when I mentioned a lot of people are already talking about fabric, there already are. I actually was, uh, I'm not going to mention no names, but there are already companies naming them as fabric, connect to the fabric, connect to the fabric. So it's, it's great seeing other companies, they're finally seeing this. Uh, but at the same time, take a big count that Fortin has been doing this and there are the leaders on this. Um, they're just finally listening to Fortinet, uh, what they are doing, because it is very, very beneficial. Now, like you can see here, there's a number of different devices they're connecting to. But again, I have other connecting devices here. Now, I have two EXIs connected to it. Um, I have what is one that is called a QBox and the other one R630. Uh, yes, I have this one is down because it's turned off but I do have that information in here that will be integrated into my fabric. So there are different options that you can actually connect. Uh, for example, you have uh, Nutanix, you have Cisco, I mean, uh, the NSX for the for, uh, VMware. I mean, you can actually integrate it into the fabric in here as well. One of the beauty things that Fortinet does great especially if you're new and you are completely lost where you're at. Let's go really quick to the policies, right? Fortinet actually gives you default policies. Now, only because they're here, it doesn't mean uh, they're in effect. You can create a whole bunch of different policies and, but they will not be in effect until you actually add them into your actual, sorry, your profiles. You can create different profiles and apply them into your policies. So for example, if you wanna create an application, as you can see, I have created already two of them. 
on this case, I created a application blocking Snapchat and TikTok, right? So if I go here and I go at, uh, edit, now I'm looking at all this. What is all this here? Well, one of the biggest things, if you hover, this is a signature base. If you collect, uh, select a uh, view signatures, it will tell you everything that is applies to this one, right? Especially when it comes to social media. Social media actually has 11, uh, 111 with 29 cloud base, right? So let's hear, and you can look what is gonna apply to that. Now you see Facebook, but if I go in here, actually click it, Facebook is Facebook. Everybody knows Facebook, but did you know it has different type of signatures? That is the beauty of this. So it does give you anything that is a plugin of a personnel logins. I mean, things like that you can actually block. Now you can give them access to Facebook, but you don't want them to actually have a chat. You can block that. So it's pretty uh, nice to configure the ways how you wanna configure your uh, profiles uh, by just selecting what you really want to do. Now, when I mentioned, if you're new to Fortinet and you're like, I don't know what I'm looking at here, how can I do what I need to do? If you go to the right side, there's a online guide. One of the things, what it does, it actually goes and sends you to the Fortinet docs. Now with this actually shows you right away where you're at. And it tells you what version you're at as well. It tells you, I'm in the application control. Uh, so I wanna see how everything can be configured. Um, let me do a little bit more studying, how I can protect myself or configure this type of application. That is done by that. Just by going here, there are some videos as well, but there is a whole lot. And every single one actually, well, the majority of them actually has that guide. And going into how can I apply those profiles? Well, great question. By going in here, you can actually see what I have. For example, I have this policy in here that is my SSID going to the WAN, right? You can select the source, the destination, the services. And then down here is whatever profile you wanna select. You can go in here and select. But let's say, oh, I forgot to create one. Well, I don't wanna move from here. That's fine. You can just click here and create it from here. And then you can apply it. And again, if you still don't know where you're at or will know what to do with it, you can actually go back into the actual guide. We'll actually tell you what you're doing, what you're looking at, what is the incoming outsource and things like that. All that information to allow you to learn on how to configure your actual firewall policies. Now with this, you can actually customize it by personnel, location. Uh, now, let's say your marketing wants to have to have access to Facebook, well, but your engineers don't have to have access to them, then you can set up a policy that my marketing team can actually have access to all the social media, but my uh, other of the rest of the company doesn't need to, you can block all of them out as well by department, personnel, anything like that. So that is the beauty that you can customize all your information from the firewall policy. That's the where a next gen firewall is by allowing you to configure and do it at the layer seven, not just by going to your layer three and blocking a port. By closing the port, you're probably gonna need to figure out a different route or a different way to let that traffic to go out if that other application needs to use it. So that's why this makes it a lot better 
uh, to be able to configure it. Now, a lot of people out there like, I hate working on the GUI. That is fine. You can go into the CLI and set it up by just clicking here. Now, at the same time, you can select it. And by here, you can actually select where I'm at and just configure it, do the configuration from there. So everything is very easy to work with, uh, however you want to do it by the, it's a GUI base or a CLI base, everything is configurable from here. Um, so reporting, you can customize, uh, well, let me go in back here. So by default, I have mine to log literally everything, right? Now you can customize it to go just to your security events. How can you go by that? You go into your logs and reports, log settings. I have it as all. Now by default, Fortinet already has it by custom and they will have a, a list of events there as well. So this is on your preference and however you wanna do it. I do have a syslog where I do send my other ones. Uh, for example, my SIM, that is my SIM that I'm forwarding those logs to. Uh, so to receive it, I have my photo analyzer and I have my uh, SIM uh, sending those logs. At the same time, you can configure your analyzer, uh, convert it from a analyzer to a collector and forward it into your SIM. I mean, there's so many different ways to collect information from the Photonet uh, solutions to other solutions and going back to an actual SIM. And again, if you have any more questions, any more information about this, please reach out to me and I can definitely, uh, to me or anybody that um, you would like to know more about this. Another thing is uh, you can actually see like data now, Fortinet has changed this a little bit. Um, it used to be uh, memory and um, analyzer. Uh, it used to be, sorry, it, correction. It has it by memory. Anything that you have live is actually gonna be there. So if I wanna see what is currently in my memory on my Fortigate, I'm sending the live data. But if I wanna go into my analyzer, for the past hour, uh, it will be showing me right here. Now, FortiGuard, uh, FortiGate Cloud um, is part of the package uh, with Fortinet. You do get seven days for free uh, log retention that sits on the actual Fortinet's cloud. Uh, if you wanna learn a little bit more about that, please reach out and uh, we will tell you more about that. So, for that being said, you can see any type of information that is currently in your data in here. At the same time, uh, the logs that you have can be generated uh, working through it, any type of security. Um, as you can see, I don't have no security. Uh, one of the biggest changes that Fortinet did change uh, is the security and the system events. Now you have to have a analyzer or on the 40 uh, gate cloud to be able to see those events is not just pulling from the actual system no more. So reports, there is some reporting that you can generate from here or you can go into the 40 gate cloud to create reports from, uh, like I mentioned, 40 gate cloud is free for seven days and you can create certain reports from there. But if you're looking for a bigger picture of your reporting, you can definitely reach out uh, and and go, go get a photo analyzer where you can definitely customize different type of customers reports by users, by uh, setting up by bullies uh, information, what is considered bullying uh, threats or anything like that. You can get those type of reports as well. Uh, that's one of, one of the biggest things that analyzer does have is giving you a big fine, defined actual policy, I mean, reporting that, if your executives want to see it, it does have, it's not a raw file, it's actually a GUI based on graphics and things like that. As you know, a lot of people in the higher ups don't have that time. So definitely having a, a chart, things like that can definitely help them 
to move the process a lot quicker. So for them to understand what is going on with your whole environment. Um, and last thing is what I want to talk about is the SD WAN. SD WAN does, like I mentioned, it does come part of it. It is free. It's embedded in here. Now, having an SD WAN, typically, if you want to do some load balancing or traffic shaping, that is typically having two different WANs, meaning two different ISPs or an ISP with an LTE. I mean, however you want to configure this. You can set up different type of rules and SLAs to uh, be able to move your traffic, uh, meaning if you have or if you have an MPLS as well, but you want to lower your cost. Now you can set up that MPLS to lower that traffic and just have it as a backup. So you don't have to overload or pay for a lot on your MPLS, right? You can still use your WAN and still have that protection. Now, by setting up the SLAs stating that if you want to create one uh, stating by uh, jitter, la latency, or packet loss, you can set up an uh, uh, SLA on that. Now, if something fails, if something is, let's say your SLA is on, on jitter, your jitter went very high from your ISP but you do have your MPLS running or your LTE and you want to move that, it will automatically, if it falls under that threshold, it will actually move it over until it comes back onto normal thresholds and you still have that constant uh, connection. Um, I seen not even, it's by milliseconds that, I, I never seen a actual uh, switch over drama whole network. It hasn't, I haven't seen it. Uh, if you have seen it, please let me know. But the test I have done, it I haven't had any type of uh, delays. It's just a constant flow moving back. So it's a very uh, neat, uh, unique solution uh, with this. Photo Extender is a LTE solution. If you are, if you have a, if you're in a location where you only have one ISP, but you want to build a redundancy. Uh, let's say you have a very strong LTE service around there and you want to utilize that as a backup, uh, Photo Extender is that additional WAN that you can create from there. Uh, you, there's different methods to manage that. There is a FortiGate Manage as a standalone or on the uh, FortiGate, uh, the Photo Extender cloud to be able to manage that Photo Extender. Just go get that uh, uh, SIM card, configure it, set up how much the cost and everything like that uh, by the data plan. I mean, that is easy as just doing it from here and being able to manage that. So um, I know I've been talking a lot and seeing a different type of solutions by what Fortinet does offer you. If you have any more questions or you would like to see more of this uh, Fortigate or any other uh, Fortinet actual solutions, please let me know. Let uh, anybody at, out there to reach out to Centegra.com slash uh, meeting. Um, they'll give me, we can set up a meeting and we can go over different solutions from here and giving you a better picture of what is Fortinet and see how we can fit your solution and be able to protect you. So with that being said, thank you so much for joining us um, and I'll see you into the next one. Thank you.